first, CLA, CLA or MOL built up the National Chemical Inventory based on the chemical nomination program under an interagency coordination action plan. Jump into the chemical management scheme under EPMOL. Actually, uh, in, in order to incorporate the source management idea into the regulatory system in Taiwan, Taiwan EPA and um, MOL took the lead to amend their main act. After the new amendment, both EPA and MOL have the authority to ask for chemical registration before manufacturing and importing your chemicals. So EPA has both the new and existing chemical registration scheme, while MOL has the new chemical registration scheme only. Some people may complain about the duplication of registration, uh, but uh, we have to understand that these two competent agencies have different regulatory scopes and purposes. You can see that workers and workplace are the target of management of MOL, while human health and the environment issues are more relevant to EPA. So to ease uh, administration requirements, actually, the MOL and EPA have successfully cooperated to form a single window. Another key point here is that it is also important to note it that we don't have, we don't use OR system here. Under the registration regulation, legal local manufacturers and importers are uh, responsible for registration. Registration can also be accomplished through TPR, the third party representative, though, if the foreign companies have any concern uh, about the business secret passing down the supply chain. There are three types of registration for new substances under TCSC and M MOLs OSHA, depending on the uses, properties, and the tonnage of the new substances. We have small quantity registration, simplified registration, and standard registration. So the item, the information required differs from, difference from registration type to type. Generally, for small quantity registration, only basic information of the substance and the registrants is needed. But for standard registration, number uh, information required number one to ten of the information requirements are required, including exposure and safety uh, uh, risk assessment report. It's basically a two phases registration. Phase one is quite similar to the pre registration on the EU reach. Uh, it's, likely, uh, it's like a survey to gather. Manage, uh, to gather information on the active substances in Taiwan. And it's going to help uh, our EPA plan the future management and the designated chemical screening. And as I mentioned, uh, the phase one period is over. And for those chemical manufactured and imported over 100 kilogram per year for the first time after phase one, uh, have to be have to be applied according to Article 19. So currently, we have compiled these data from Phase One, and now the task for its EPA is to uh, analyze the data and then come up with a list of designated substances. We set three basic criteria and design a science-based assessment procedure accordingly. So we first came up with an assessment procedure to screen the chemicals of high concern. Uh, through the assessment, we can narrow down the number and best targeting on those we should take care of in the further registration. Firstly, uh, in the assessment procedure, we will have to obtain GHS classification from the international database and then use the hazard classification in the accumulated nationwide tonnage in Taiwan mm -hmm. to score their ranking, respectively. 
and this, and after this, we put together into a risk metric matrix and allocate their risk priorities as high, medium, or low. Afterwards, high priority chemicals will go through secondary assessment again, and then we can then. Uh, designate the chemicals for further standard registration. For those chemicals that are uh, that we cannot assess any GHS classification, we would like to open a consultation to collect the available data possessed by industries. Um, we call it a challenge program. Apparently, it is a stolen idea from CMP. So generally, we provide a chance to, uh, to that industries defend for their chemicals and uh, provide some GHS classification information. Since most of our companies, our industries are small and medium-sized industries, uh, our government will be going to collect some avail available data results exempt some of the data requirements accordingly because we believe it is not making any sense to do the same test again if there are already clear results available and re reliable there. So a template with less data requirements will be tailored and given for those designated chemicals individually. So other than the chemical registration, uh, when we narrow down to the toxic chemical substances, there are some more rigid management measurements. And you may have to check if you are importing any, uh, any of toxic chemicals. EPA have announced, uh, has announced 310 toxic chemicals based on their inherent hazards. They are classified into one to four different classes when they conform to the toxic chemical substance classification criteria. Once a chemical has been announced as class one to four, companies who handle it will need to apply for permits, registration, and approvals. And the registration here is not the same as we just talked about. And you have to comply with relevant management measures under different handling conditions. CNS 15030, Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, is the main national standard for chemical classification and labeling in Taiwan. It adopted the fourth revision, the fourth version of the Purple Book, Several GHS-related regulations among different agencies in Taiwan all have referred to, referred to this standard. Since Taiwan has adopted all the building blocks of UN GHS, CNS is simply like a Chinese version of Purple Book. So you can directly refer to the English version of the GHS Purple Book to classify your chemicals. During the period from 2008 to 2013, the authority uh, designated uh, the substance that were highly hazardous and used in large volume in Taiwan by three uh, stages of announcement. So at that time, it is mandatory to provide the SDS for these uh, designated chemicals. And full GHS implementation is scheduled in 2016, uh, just like I mentioned many, many times. And we have one year transitional period. That means your SDS, your labeling, shall be ready while you import your chemical product to Taiwan before next year. Regulations under EPA and MOL both play very important roles in the chemical management legal framework in Taiwan. So you will have to go through these regulations before you enter Taiwan's market. Also, EPA's Bureau of Toxics and Chemical Substance will be established in December, actually.
and it is believed that their next uh, key point, executive key points, will be inspection. At the same time, the designated registration will be announced soon. Besides, do remember that full GHS implementation excuse me, take place in 2017, actually 16, but yeah, it's, uh, there's a grace period. And the SDS labeling and hazard communication will definitely be the focus of the chemical safety inspection, according to OSHA as well. So please, please communicate with your Taiwan companies proactively. And I know CBI is the most concern for every company. Please do use the withholding application if needed. Now it is free of charge, but I don't know if it's going to charge any review fee uh, next year. Mm -hmm.